don't be naive. Keep your eyes open. Know that things that you have no idea or no expectation of happening are going to happen because you got to be ready for change. You got to be ready for unexpected yeah. things happening constantly. Uh, if you're not, this is not the business for you. Hi guys, and thank you for watching us. Just a quick word before we start. In today's video, you are going to learn two valuable insights. First of all, you will learn how a family-owned enterprise has managed to thrive in the current business world. At the same time, you will learn the little things that an FEC owner will do differently when opening his first location. Wise Talks is a series of interviews with real FEC owners, with people that are going to share with us valuable insights from their experience since opening the first location and up to this point. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy what's coming next. Hello everyone, I'm Stefan, I'm the sales manager here at iNoize, the developers of the Arcadia VR Arena. Together with me today, I have uh, Mr. Steve and Mr. Lani Pennington, owners of Grand Adventure Texas, one of the newest spots on the entertainment map of Fort Worth. Hello guys, and thank you very much for joining me today. How are you both doing? Good, how are you? You're very welcome. Great to be here, Stefan. <laughs> I'm great, thank you, thank you guys. I will first like us to start with speaking a little bit about Grand Adventure, about what Grand Adventure is about, and a little bit about the story behind it. Okay, uh, well, I guess I'll start. Um, about six years ago, we were looking, uh, we had a piece of property that we had quite a while that was uh, needing to be developed, and uh, we we're looking for ideas of things to do that would help us to, uh, to put that property into use and uh, actually Lonnie has a story about uh, polling friends basically that uh, actually gave us a, a little bit of a kick into the entertainment industry so I'll let him talk about that. There's just one friend I was looking for advice from different business ideas and one friend just said many law and I thought many law and we uh, actually started expanding it from there found uh, really fit the model for what we were trying to develop. So we, we came from a very different background in lake construction. Yeah. <laughs> Completely different. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so it, uh, that was the beginning of it. And we had no idea what road that was going to take us down. Uh, you know, we, we were looking for uh, concepts and things. And uh, we went through a lot of different scenarios. Went to IAPA, uh, was our first introduction into the yeah. really see what we're getting into. Uh, and uh, that started our education process. And we found out that typically mini golf is not a standalone attraction anymore. It doesn't do well by itself. It works better in the context of a, a family entertainment center. And so we began to get the idea of what that was and, and work through that. And so uh, we thought in the beginning, one and a half, two years would be open and running. People told us it takes usually two to five years. And I thought that was funny. There's no way. <laughs> Six years later, we are five and a half years later, we actually opened the building. So uh, they were really right. So uh, <laughs> industry professionals typically kind of know what they're talking about. And so that was interesting for us to, to learn that, that process. And um, starting with mini golf, that was the, the initial plan. Um, and up to this moment, how many attractions are you guys having right now at Grand Adventure? So right now we have three major attractions, as I call them, main attractions. Um, the biggest one is going to be our go-karts, or we call it the Desert Adventure. We have yeah. a good track with, uh, with AP electric carts out there. We okay. have an incredible mini golf course that we spent a long time developing. I, I saw it. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And we, we really wanted to go for a high-quality 18-hole mini golf course, and I think we just really hit it out of the park on that one. Um, and then uh, one thing we count as an attraction that we uh, try to draw because we're so outdoors is going to be y'all's uh, uh, the Arquest Arena, or as it's called Arcadia now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's yeah, that's our other one. Yeah, we have the six-player version of that, and uh, that keeps us going inside <laughs> along with our arcade that we have. And okay. we we also have this for for expanding and having other attractions also in the near future. Okay, okay, thank you guys. I wanted to shed a little bit of light over what Grand Adventure is about right now and the major attractions that we have 
uh, at the center. Um, now, if that would be all right for you as well, um, I would like us to go, for example, a few months back um, to the moment when the entire COVID lockdown happened. Um, and I would like to ask, how was it for you guys when you had to close the center? Well, it was pretty devastating, actually. We, uh, we had just opened. I mean, a matter of a, a few weeks, uh, had, and we were late opening because of all kinds of weather delays and, and certain things that caused that. And uh, uh, so when we got open, uh, we started seeing a trajectory of starting slow and climbing. Just for reference, we opened in February, yes. which is a very slow time. Yes. yes. February is not your best time to open a family entertainment center, but it's what we got. So uh, as we opened, uh, we began to see steady growth. Uh, at the first, we were there uh, early February till early March. Yeah, about not mid-March is when we finally closed down. So it was uh, pretty hard to take uh, the idea of beginning to develop momentum. Uh, getting your name out there, you're open, people are starting to recognize that, and then suddenly uh, you're, you're done, you're closed. So it was hard. Indeed, it was devastating, especially for our industry compared to, actually it was pretty hard for the entire world, and I can only <laughs> imagine how it was for you guys, especially since you have only been recently opened. Um, but you were mentioning that uh, at that point the struggle uh, was to get uh, the attention of the people and then COVID happened. Uh, and could you guys tell us, did you receive like uh, any feedback from, the, uh, from your audience, from your customer, from your guests while you were in lockdown? Did you see like a need on their side to go and have fun in your center? I had, we, we hadn't built a very large customer base yet. We were just starting, but some of the, I have an email subscriber list. So they sometimes reply in emails and I would get a few emails. They were all really worried about us, praying for us. They were all uh, quite concerned. And so I did have some support from the community. Okay. I didn't get a lot of people just banging on my door saying we need to be <laughs> open. I just got mostly, I feel it was more supportive kind of attitude. Mostly understanding people, people knew what was going on. They, they didn't hold us responsible for it. We, strangely enough, we have some actually very high end redemption prizes and okay. some older guests were trying to save up their points to get some of those high end redemption prizes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, we didn't realize how successful that was going to be, uh, at the time. But, uh, uh, actually we had people who had, you know, 27 to 30,000 points or tickets on their cards. And then all of a sudden we closed. And I think they were wondering, uh, is that permanent? Is that forever? And uh, so uh, the, uh, the problem was, it wasn't that they didn't want to come. It's problem is we just, we actually stayed open after the COVID thing started by cleaning and, and make sure our putters yeah. were clean. We had all kinds of things. But then the, about the, we decided we needed to close about the same time the government mandated that we close. So it was an interesting time. Yeah. It was actually an interesting thing. During our spring, we prepared a lot of advertising for spring break, but uh, and we were technically able to be open in the state during spring break. We hadn't quite reached the, uh, the shutdown point. point. It was rather, yeah, it was uh, rather disheartening though because no one was coming at that point you know, because the the panic had already set in by then. Okay. Another uh, important question that I have uh, about the lockdown days let's call them this way um okay that time uh, especially in uh, the entertainment industry was a lot about making changes and making adjustments to the center just to make it uh, a lot safer for the customer and make it like covid approved let's call it uh could you guys share with us a little bit about the the things that you did and changed at the center during the lockdown just to assure uh safety for your customers Sure. sure. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, since one of our biggest attractions at the time was mini golf, was we started a new policy that uh, works well. I've got a lot of questions on it. Uh, that is, we sanitize every uh, putter and every ball after every customer. I think okay. that was the biggest uh, change right there for us. And we were already sanitizing the headsets and the guns uh, with the VR yeah. system. 
uh, we just stepped up, made sure that that was heavily done, uh, even more so. Uh, at the time, we didn't know what we were going to do about the arcades. They were telling us if we could open, not open. And we decided we would also uh, step up. Instead of cleaning the arcades a few times a day, we would clean them like every hour and make sure that there was a sanitizing going on, especially if traffic would get heavy, then we would uh, then we would look at doing it even more often. So. I understand. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, the center has been reopened since uh, the early May. Am I right? First of May, yes. Um, we how was opened the theaters is what we did. Okay, I, I, I see. Uh, and how was it when you first reopened the center, when you made the announcement, when uh, people first started coming back and have fun at Grand Adventure? What did you notice, for example, uh, at your audience? It, it felt like we were starting over from our base, slowly building back up again. Um, it was rapid, though. It was, uh, took place over just a few weeks, a very rapid climb. Um, okay. Yeah. So we, uh, we had a... Uh, a large, uh, we had a goal set for the month of May for each week. Uh, and uh, we were stunned when we doubled the goal that we had set in the month of May. So, and that, and that goal, would, it was a small goal. It was because we had no idea what to expect with everything, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it went very well uh, compared to what we had considered would happen. So we were well beyond where we were back in February and early March. Uh, yeah, um, did you guys reopen all the attractions at once or it was something more like in stages? First, let's start with the outdoor attractions, then let's move to those indoor. So, so more, we, it was kind of, not very much. More what we did was advertising stages. The first advertising was focused on mini golf because that was okay. easy to control, easy to clean, and people felt a lot more comfortable and safe with that. The last thing would be the VR. We started to advertise the VR again because I think people were more scared of it. So, and the arcade, the indoor attractions. Uh, some it's, we've had very strange reactions. Uh, we, we had all kinds of crazy mixed signals from our government about what we could could not do. Uh, so we weren't. We were very confused about how we could. Open. Some places didn't open because of the confusion. Um, us being new startup. We didn't feel like we had the option to wait around and see what the government was going to say. So as soon as they said uh, places similar to ours could open, we opened. And then we found out weeks later we weren't even supposed to have part of it open. Uh, but by the time we discovered this, they allowed it to open. So uh, we had no complaints from guests. We Actually, they were thrilled that we were open. Uh, they were well, thrilled. We're in a slightly different county culture. The, the Local government here was very on board with us yes. opening up. So it's, it's different if we were, say, in the heart of Dallas, we probably would not have opened. Correct. Yeah, yeah or if we were in El Paso or Houston or San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. We're a suburban type community and it's outside of Fort Worth. We had a very different uh, local government. And that was helpful in the end. It was. Mm -hmm. um, looking at uh, at the entire center, you guys have, uh, let's say, a majority of attractions that are outdoor compared to those indoor. Um, yes. And looking at all the sanitizations and all the cleanings required for the for the center to work, uh, which one would you say that has proven a lot more challenging up to this point, taking care of the things outdoor or those indoor? Probably the indoor takes more man hours. Um, yes. Because of the arcade and the VR, there's more requirements there. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, indoor yeah, sure. The go karts are relatively simple. Uh, between each guest, when they step out, we come back in with a spray sanitizer, spray down the steering wheels, the seat belts, okay. the seats, anything that they touch is sprayed on each cart. And in Texas, you know, this time of year, it's almost 100 degrees or is 100 <laughs> degrees. And so that, that evaporates in like 90 seconds, and it's 99.99% uh, kill okay. on all the viruses and things, so bacteria. So it's, it's very easy with the big spray bottles. Uh, indoors, wiping down the machines and every place that small children might touch is a little more challenging. I understand. Um, 
One of the biggest challenge that uh, the operators had during the past few months uh, was staff managing. Um, mm. And this made me ask, how, how was everything for you guys? I know that you also recently had like interviews for new staff. How did the pandemic affect the team that you had just built up for opening the center? So this is a very fun, fascinating watch. Um, almost all of our staff came back in, except for the really bad ones, which <laughs> was awesome. Yeah, so almost so, like a relief. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, so we had hiring events, um, and it went very well. I mean, in terms of uh, we've not been very hit very hard by COVID in this region, so we've okay. not had any uh, staff catching that. So we've been in a really good position on by all accounts. Um, I think we're just lucky. I certainly know that people believe a lot of staff out this time, but uh, we've done very well on that. I, I will say something that it's, it, it probably is COVID related. Uh, I don't know how to quantify it exactly, but um, just starting COVID, schools not functioning, all the crazy stuff going on. We really didn't know how to staff because we didn't know what to expect. And the, I guess the surprising thing that's been good is we've had to really up the staff. We've had to hire a lot of extra people. We've hired, uh, we're about to have hired 11 extra staff in the last few weeks. And we're still concerned of whether that's going to be close to enough. And it's because of the demand as we spread out and open the mini golf, uh, not just mini golf, but the uh, go karts, mm -hmm. which are about 100 meters away from the, go uh, the, the mini golf. We now have to have three staff members down there. We have to have staff members checking on the, go uh, the golf course. Uh, giving out the clubs, sanitizing the clubs, sanitizing the balls. Uh, so it's it's been interesting. Lonnie does all the staffing. So he keeps that. So for him, I, I can't say how challenging it is, but for me to watch it, uh, there's been several times not realizing that we're going to be slammed with hundreds of people uh, and we were prepared for dozens of people and have to up the game real quick uh, and fill in places. Uh, I basically am the fill-in guy. I do anything that, that has to happen. If our kitchen is short, I'm the cook. If uh, if the cleaning needs to happen, I'm cleaning. If I'm, I'm out pulling weeds on the mini golf, uh, cleaning off the go-kart track, repairing go-karts, whatever, I kind of fill into all those positions. And uh, Lonnie tries to keep help coming as much as he can. So <laughs> it's possible. That's amazing. I mean, uh, this is what uh, the last few months were about. Uh, working hard for our business and working hard for our guests and customers. This is what granted success in the end, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm kind of curious. Um, let's say that if this entire pandemic and, and if this entire lockdown had one good thing, what would you guys say that the good thing that uh, Grand Adventure came out of this entire pandemic would be like one positive aspect. Um, it's, I guess it'd be losing the bad staff. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was a definite positive, but uh, you know, we're a Christian organization. We uh, give all the glory to God for this. And so we know that he's getting us through it uh, and he's helped us through it. And we've seen his hand in it. So, that's been great. Uh, the thing that I would say that it helped us as a business the most because of COVID, and I can actually see something that helped. It gave us time. Uh, I've seen so many new businesses open in my area that get horrible reviews because they are overwhelmed in the beginning. Uh, it gave us time to get things right. So as we opened, instead of having Thousands of people come in as we would have forecasted. We had hundreds and it was easy to get the staff up to speed and trained because they were, they thought they were busy when we were at 20% traffic. Now that, now that the traffic is rising and rising, they realized what they were wrong about what busy was. But early on, if this new staff had been slammed with a hundred percent of our projections, we would have gotten some really bad reviews and right now our reviews are through the roof and uh, we have excellent reviews um, and the reviews are important. So many people now when they go online, they want to see what the reviews are of that facility. And if they see five stars out of five stars, they are, Oh, we're going there. <laughs> and so that's been very helpful not to be overwhelmed early on as a startup. Now, if we'd been in business for five years, I probably wouldn't have the same perspective. 
But uh, as a startup, that was one of my biggest fears. We wouldn't be able to keep up with the, the cooking. Uh, we wouldn't be able to keep up with the high quality desserts and things that we try to serve. Uh, and we have been able to. We've been able to do that. We've been able to correct a few things that weren't working well. Uh, we've had go-kart issues that we've had to work on. Uh, and uh, it, not being overwhelmed, that's not been a problem. I mean, a problem, but not the problem it could have been if we were at full speed. So we're, we want to get to full speed, but it's been a blessing in disguise to not have to be at full speed at the startup. So, and as a non-franchise, as a non, as an individual independent uh, organization, we, uh, we don't have a lot of the support that a franchise would have to, to get started well. So we kind of have to invent that ourselves. And that's been very helpful. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually great feedback and a great point of view, how uh, stopping everything for a while has actually helped you grow up uh, and develop the center extremely organic and extremely natural, especially with the relationship with the guests as well. Right. That's something pretty cool and pretty neat. Uh, I don't know how you recreate that. If you're a new organization starting yeah. next year and there's no COVID, I don't know what you do to, to, to hold things back. But, uh, you might risk being taken away by the wave and yeah. mess everything up or go on the top. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, speaking of good practices, um, for the people that are now looking at this video, uh, and let's say that they are thinking about opening an entertainment center, going into the entertainment and amusement industry, um, what piece of advice would you guys have for them? Uh, over plan. Uh, we, we over plan, but we, did, we were very naive as to what the cost would be. <laughs> uh, every builder, every person that told us what the cost would be was way wrong. Uh, you know, we had uh, government expenses and things that we had no idea about when we got our permits, um, things about the cost to link up to the sewer systems and things like that, that were five, 10 times what we were told they would be. Uh, so don't be naive. Don't go in short on cash because uh, you may be like me and have to sell most of the family farm to make up the differences. So, um, uh, so just so you know, it's, it's, you need to be not, don't be naive, keep your eyes open, know that things that you have no idea or no expectation of happening are going to happen. And you just need to be ready for that because if that messes your world up, you shouldn't go into this business because you got to be ready for change. You got to be ready for unexpected things happening constantly. Uh, if you're not, this is not the business for you. Yeah, we have plenty of proof for that one. Um, and speaking, uh, speaking about you this time, uh, looking back to when you first started developing the center and working on all the papers, all the constructions and everything else, um, if you were to start all over again, what will be the things that you will do different this time? Oh, man. <laughs> different? What would we do? Uh, pay more money for an architect? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I would... Uh, I would would yes, not yes. get the cheapest architect that was available. I would buy a, uh, I would pay more money. One that's um, not retiring. Yes. That'd be the big deal. Uh, but the architect, arch, spend more money on your engineering and architecture because it'll save you money in the long run. Everyone tells you that. And then you look at the project and say, I can't afford this. I can't afford it. Really and truly, if we had spent a little bit more on our engineering and our architecture work, we would have probably saved money in the long run. Uh, everything turned out great but it took a lot of being flexible to make that happen and a lot of changes and things that had to happen. So uh, we would definitely want to do more uh, work on the engineering and architecture project. Uh, probably would, uh, I, I don't know, we really wish we had a bigger building, but uh, you know, we built the biggest one we could build at the time. It's, it's built to be expanded. Uh, the bankers are all on board with that. It's not actually showing a year of positive numbers, which has been very interesting in COVID time. So, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, you know, it, 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 do the best you can with what you got. Uh, it, I would say it's better to start than to plan forever and never get open. Uh, but you have to have a balance, a balance between 
uh, opening quickly and uh, and planning well. I understand. Um, well, guys, uh, those were pretty much my main questions for today. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time and joining me in this let's call it video session, the first out of many to come. Uh, it would be great if we could like have another one maybe in the future and see how things have been developing uh, since the first time we speak. Um, yeah. Until then, once again, thank you very much for the time, uh, for You're answering all the questions, for all the feedback that you have provided and all the advice that we have given to the people that will be looking at this video. Okay. You're welcome, man. Thank you. Thanks, care. Stefan. Take care. Appreciate <laughs> you guys it. guys as well. Take care and have a nice one.